So now let's introduce you to a few of the settings within Assistive Touch that uh, would help you to uh, to tune the performance of the of the input device according to what you need. Uh, the first one to notice perhaps is the idle opacity setting which is currently set to 40% and that is an indication of the way in which the uh, cursor dims uh, after you uh, stop moving. So for example if I move the cursor around you'll see it's the normal uh, brightness but if I wait a few seconds it'll dim down to whatever setting you like and um, at the moment it's set to 40% that's the default it, and uh, if you don't want that feature then just uh, increase it to 100% and then it will stay fixed on screen certainly if somebody's got a visual impairment then it will probably benefit you to do that there is also the option of an even bigger cursor so again for visual impairments that's also worth knowing about uh, going back into the assistive touch menu and just moving down a little bit um, this says pointing devices. If I click on that, then you'll see at the top here it says Praetorian Optima. That's, of course, what's plugged in. Tap on that again, and then it will list the, uh, the, the buttons that are configured at the moment. And at the moment, by default, there's always three buttons set up, whether, whether or not the device has got three buttons. Although the Optima uh, joystick does have three buttons, the, the middle one is a drag lock anyway, which is a sort of derivative of, uh, of the uh, left click. So in, in, in reality, it's only really got two. Uh, but the thing to, to be particularly careful of is that Apple have numbered them in a, a way that you wouldn't necessarily expect. That's referred to as button one, this is button two, and that's button three. Therefore, it's button three that this doesn't really have. Um, and therefore we only want button one and two. I've got one set to single tap, which will select an item, um, and uh, button two set to home, uh, which is really all, all you generally need, but you do have an awful lot of settings. So if I tap on there, for example, this is all the settings that I can select, and there's all sorts of things in there. Um, obviously, uh, we've spoken about a couple, uh, but there's also things like lock screen, uh, pinch, screenshot, even shake so there's there's lots of different things you can do and if you are using a device that's got lots of buttons you can set more up so you're not restricted to three if you've got a five button mouse for example you can use that and you can set up all five individually okay so back to the assistive touch menu next thing to to make you aware of is this tracking speed here just move the cursor out of the way tracking speed and um, with it set to its default position we think it's rather fast and uh, you might want to have to slow that down. Um, it, it, this is only a beta, of course, so then, then, then Apple may change that in any case, but um, we've slowed it down to about 20% of what uh, the, the, uh, the, the full speed setting. But also, the thing, thing to remember is that all of our devices have a speed setting, so you can choose whether to do it in the, in the pointing device or in the iPad, and the, there are advantages is for both, depends on what you want to achieve. If you want the setting to follow the, uh, the pointing device from, uh, from iPad to iPad, then do it in the, uh, in the pointing device. But if you want to set it up by user, then you probably want to do it in the iPad. Moving on down, we've then got drag lock. Now, all Praetorian uh, uh, pointing devices have got a, a drag lock feature anyway, so if you're using our products, you won't, you won't probably need that. Um, also, some of our products have a uh, dwell click feature, but it is included here as well in the assistive touch menu. If I turn that on, then I can set the, uh, the dwell period, um, after which it will, uh, once the cursor has stopped moving, that timer will start, and if, it, if the timer elapses before you've moved the cursor again, then it will do um, whatever button number one is associated with, which is usually uh, tap or, or uh, open item. Okay, so that covers most of the things you need. There's a whole lot more in there than that, uh, but that, that's, uh, that gets you going and we'll explore a few more things as we go along. But let's move on now to uh, some of our uh, simpler uh, pointing devices and then we'll move on from there to the more complicated ones as we go along. So coming up next, we're going to look at Slimline and also the Optima.